Um, today our theme is the movement of forgiveness. And the spiritual law, direct quote from the book, is forgiving uplifts the forgiver. And the, their, the relationship between the forgiver and forgiveness, uh, this is probably what's meant by the movement of forgiveness. It's a very dramatic image when you think about it, the movement of forgiveness. Um, because forgiveness has to begin from the injured party. It can't really begin from the one uh, who has done the injuring. So there is a, a real movement, and it's a movement of generosity as well. And at its deepest level, forgiveness is, is, a, is a spiritual, uh, it's a virtue, it's a spiritual virtue. It's not an attribute, again, it's not an attribute of being human that we are forgiving, uh, that we are generous, uh, and that we are filled with gratitude. These are virtues. We have the potential, the capacity, this, the disposition to be forgiving, but it has to be developed, it's, it has to be exercised. And it would be—forgiveness uh, is a universal feature of, of human life, and it would be hard to imagine a human society from which it is utterly absent. Uh, and forgiveness has been a, a topic that has been discussed uh, since ancient times by philosophers, religious thinkers, theologians, and more recently by social scientists, psychologists, and scientists. In fact, the literature on for forgiveness is very, very broad, and it's not just a religious or a philosophical literature, the, the scientific literature on forgiveness as a dimension of the new discipline of positive psychology is, is immense and it's growing rapidly. Um, and it's actually a relatively recent uh, concern or, or, or topic of scientific uh, and psychological study. I'll have more to say about the, the amazing, immense results, measurable results of forgiveness from a, from a positive psychology standpoint uh, towards the end of this very short talk. Uh, but some of the issues that, are, that arise in the philosophy of forgiveness have to do with um, a kind of basic divide between philosophers, uh, theologians, and social scientists on one side, and psychologists on the other. And uh, f because um, forgiveness, remember there's a movement here, the movement of forgiveness. It actually has to begin from the person who has in some way suffered a, an injury or a violation or a wrong. That it has to move from that person to the other. And so there are two, two dimensions to forgiveness. One is the the act of forgiving, and the other act, and that's a personal, individual act, uh, and uh, the other side of that is reconciliation. And uh, reconciliation is more of a social fact, uh, because without forgiveness there, can't, there cannot be reconciliation. That would seem pretty clear. But there can be forgiveness without recon uh, there can be uh, There cannot be reconciliation without forgiveness. But there can be forgiveness without reconciliation. That is, one can personally forgive someone and not ever make this an issue with the person who's done the injuring. Now, I, I do want to stress that in some cases, offering forgiveness and seeking forgiveness may not be advisable. Uh, there, there is a kind of a radicalness in some writing on forgiveness that might overlook the psychological difficulty of people in, in, a, in a relationship like this of actually confronting each other. And that's why the psychological literature tends not to stress the more social dimensions uh, that we do find in the theological, philosophical, and social scientific literature, where reconciliation does seem to play a much larger role. The psychological literature tends to stress the personal, psychological, intrapersonal instead of interpersonal aspects of forgiveness, and that is uh, whether I ever engage in any sort of dialogue or, or uh, interaction with uh, a perceived or actual transgressor against myself, I can always exercise inwardly um, the, the uh, forgiveness towards uh, such people. Now, sometimes forgiveness can be premature and it can be too easy, and this gives rise to a concern about easy forgiveness or unearned forgiveness, and uh, one writer actually refers to this as a kind of easy, an easygoing uh, forgiveness. And the, the problem here, again, this is more from the philosophical side, uh, is that this can uh, undermine, in their view, the laws or the, the, the moral order or even the divine order by too quickly giving transgressors a, a free pass. 
Um, so uh, those are some of the aspects of forgiveness has been studied in many ways in the psychological literature, um, and uh, uh, the questions are, arise as to whether or not it's a, it's a cognitive state, is it a kind of judgment that we make, is, is it an emotional state? Um, so uh, many, many other such issues can be raised uh, with respect to, to this uh, question of what forgiveness is. Um, forgiveness is, uh, ha is a theme that we find expressed in many, if not all, religious traditions. One thing I will say up front uh, about Judaism in particular, uh, uh, Judaism uh, does have a large place for forgiveness uh, in the tradition, but it's often predicated uh, upon a kind of, of costly forgiveness, that the, the, the one who uh, is seeking forgiveness has to actually uh, become worthy of that forgiveness, and sometimes that can actually involve uh, making a real amends to the person who has been injured. So it's not just an easy, free forgiveness process. Of course, this is how it's described in text. It doesn't necessarily mean that that's what governs the, the life and practice of every person, of every Jewish person. Um, Hinduism, of course, has the notion of forbearance or forgiveness, going back to the Vedic text, the notion of kshama. Uh, uh, Judaism, I mentioned already, uh, Maimonides uh, wrote about a costly forgiveness processor for the offender. So there is no uh, easy uh, pathway back. And, and rightfully, in many cases, there shouldn't be. And the question arises, of course, can some actions or persons actually be forgiven uh, when we think of instances of, of abuse or torture or even some of the great crimes of humanity. Where does forgiveness really fit in in that process? Uh, Confucius, Confucius said, to be wronged is nothing unless you continue to remember it. And uh, there's a process for forgiveness that's outlined in, in the Buddhist text called the Vasudhi Maga. Um, but uh, Sir, John, Sir John, as we may imagine, uh, had a radical view of radical forgiveness, and more of a psychological view, but with a cosmic dimension as well. For John, it's almost as if, for him, forgiving on all sides, no matter what the uh, uh, whatever the conditions, was the kind of forgiveness that uh, he writes about. Total forgiveness, he calls it, a forgiveness without conditions, such as the demand for repentance. Why? Because forgiveness he sees as a divine and spiritual force like love, kindness, gratitude, and prayer, which when practiced can build harmonious community. And this, 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 this total forgiveness is grounded in a, in a very deeply mystical notion that ultimately there is no other than the self that there's only one of us here, really, and that if I hold a grudge against you, I'm really holding a grudge against myself. And I might actually, the movement of forgiveness, I might actually begin to kind of uh, defreeze the process, loosen up a process of hostility by actually engaging in active forgiveness of the other up front. Uh, because in the end, we are all a part of each other. Now, I, there are so many scientific benefits, scientifically verified benefits. I almost I have to read the list uh, in order to just give give a sense of how valuable, from a psychological and personal perspective. Um, forgiveness can be. Uh, this is more of a psychological understanding. It's not the philosophical understanding that brings in conditions. This is something we can personally practice without ever engaging with those that we may feel need to repent, to use that very strong word. Practicing forgiveness um, has many, uh, many great benefits, such as people who do this have fewer physical ailments. They make use of less medicine. They're not as tired as other people. They sleep better. Um, and there's a, there's a whole list of articles that can be given if anyone's interested. There are many researchers at work on this. Um, forgiving oneself has been posit forgiving others has been a posit has been associated with with health in young and middle aged adults. It's found, been found to correlate with improved outcomes for some medical conditions. Um, forgiveness has protective benefits with, for patients with heart disease, including a reduced risk of of uh, myocardial ischemia and lower total cholesterol um, ratios among people who actually uh, practice forgiveness. Among individuals with spinal cord injuries, those who were more forgiving have been reported to have greater life satisfaction and better health outcomes. Um, 
and forgiveness intervention therapies are reported to have had positive effect upon the emotional health of many different groups of people, uh, college students and many others, people hurt by uh, the actions of others. And this can continue on, and there is so much more to be said. But one thing is clear, that reducing hostility, hatred, and anger by practicing forgiveness of others and self-forgiveness, even if we don't do it publicly, has, uh, an, um, has a great influence upon, particularly, it seems, our, our coronary health. And that's why I think the practice of forgiveness is to be highly recommended.